Jai Shri Krishna. Welcome to program number seven in our series Bhagavad Gita Discussions. These series of programs are coming to you through the International Gita Forum Caribbean and IETV. And of course, through the kind sponsorship of all our sponsors whom you would see on the, see on the program itself. Today we begin chapter three. And in studio, as on the, our previous episodes, we have our senior pundit and consultant to the International Gita Forum Caribbean, Pandit Vikram Aditya Maharaj. We now begin our program, Chapter 3, Bhagavad Gita. Pandit Ji. Arjuna Vaj. Jayase Cheta Karana Maste Mata Buddhir Janardhan Tatakim karamani gore maam niyo jayasi yakeshava. You remember, I've said Arjuna has asked 18 questions yes. in the Gita. Mm -hmm. This is the second question where he says to Lord Krishna, if it is that you are saying to me that knowledge is superior to karma or action, then, O Keshava, O Lord Krishna, why do you insist that I perform this terrible karma? So this terrible karma we are talking about is having to slay the Guru and Bhishma. Yeah, his family members. Family members. And he further says, Vyami shre neva vake na buddhira mohaya sivami tadekam vadaya nishchit ya ye na shre what you have done to me, O Lord Krishna, I have asked you to help me. But what you have done in truth is confused me more. more. Mm -hmm. My mind, my understanding is more confused. I would like you to tell me with great certainty which of these two paths I must follow. Should I follow the path of knowledge or should I follow the path of karma or action? action. And Sri Bhagavan Uvaj, Lord Krishna says to Arjun immediately, Lokasmin Vivida Nishta Puro Proto Mayanaga Jnana Yogena Sankhyanam Karma Yogena Yoginam. He says, O Arjun, these two paths, the path of knowledge and the path of action, I am the one who has given the world these two paths. But I say to you, the path of action comes first, is more important. Not everybody is designed to renounce everything. So you must first perform, perform your duty. You cannot remain actionless in this world, Arjun, by abstaining from action. By abstaining from karma, you cannot remain actionless. And you cannot rise into what is called perfection, the state of perfection, by merely saying, well, I renounce everything. Yeah, and sit and do nothing. So I, and sitting and doing nothing, that is not renunciation. Mm -hmm. You could only renounce what you have. So you could only renounce karma when you perform karma. And then you could renounce it after. But if you have never performed karma, you are not qualified to talk about the renunciation of karma. So that someone who sits and says, I am doing nothing, that doesn't mean renunciation of karma. It do, not at all. Mm -hmm. There's a verse that coming up, we'll explain that further. In chapter, wait, wait, verse what, six? Five. Verse five. Nahikakshanam api jatu tishta karma krit karyati yavasha karma sarva prakriti jai gunai. No one can remain actionless, Arjun, even for a moment, simply because of two things that are working together or at play. One is called the gunas, which is born out of prakriti. Because of prakriti, prakriti means nitya. 
because of Nitya and because of the qualities that you brought with you in the world, that will prevent you from remaining actionless. And even when someone sits silently, someone may say, I am actionless. But even as you breathe. You're performing action? Yeah. You can't, you're thinking. Yeah. You can't remain inactive. Nobody can remain so. Nobody can remain active. There is a verse in the Bhagavad Puran mm -hmm. where it is said, Nahi kakshit kshanam api jatu tishta karamakrit krayate hyavashak karama gunai swabhavati kai balat. He says, even for a moment, you cannot survive without performing an action. Simply because you are forced to perform action. Forced to perform action through prakriti, nitya. Nitya Nature will force you to yeah. do it. Because the body's desire to remain alive. Yeah. yeah. By the performance uh, of action. Of action, yeah. I must yeah. breathe. I, I, breathing is automatic. Let us say for, for some strange reason, mm -hmm. you end up in a hospital bed. I want to use totally in a coma where you can't move an inch and they have you on this machine and you're breathing through the machine and if the doctors or the nurses do not turn your body and move you you know what happens to you you develop something called bed sores mm -hmm. and that is not a nice thing to experience so you have to move for this body to function karma indriyani sanyam na asati manasasmaran now, Lord Krishna describes a person is called a hypocrite who sits in one place controlling the sense organs, but yet his mind and objects are on something else. So he looks like he is in control, yeah. but really in mind he is elsewhere. Come, I, I use a simple example. It comes like people say, I, I offer jal every morning, right? While I, I offer in jal and I still can't get help. But while you're offering the jal, you see somebody who you don't want to see. So you're offering the jal. You mean I don't see this devil face this morning? Yeah. So your, mind, your body is offering jal, but your mind is somewhere mm -hmm. else. Kabir Das says, that is um, verse 6, yes. Kabir Das says, Mananara rangayate ho rangaya yogi kapra. He says, you put on the clothes, the saffron or clothes that we wear, you're playing Swami. Mm -hmm. So you put on the saffron robe. You dye the clothes. Rangaya yogi kapara. You only dye the clothes. You don't dye your mind. So, so your you mind look, is not in renunciation. You look the path. You look like a renunciate, yeah. but you are not renounced. He says, Jatava badai yogi dunia ramale. Dunia badai yogi bani gaye le bakra. That's one of the most beautiful things written by Tulsi um, Kabir Das. Kabir Das. Uh -huh. He says, you didn't color the mind of renunciation. So what you have done, you have grown a long beard. You sprinkle ashes all over your body. But there is no internal devotion. The devotion that you have the ex is only external. And this beard that you have makes you look like a ram goat. It can make you look like a bhakta. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's so serious about this thing. It simply means, do not fool yourself. Let nature take its course. Whatever you do in the Gita, there's a verse coming on later on that says, whatever little devotion we practice will help us down the road. If you have a little bit, you could build on it. If you have none, you cannot build on it. You can't build on nothing. So, do not be a hypocrite. Yes, to India, ni manasa, ni yam ya rabati arjuna, if you want to excel, Arjun, I say to you, control the senses, control the mind, become unattached, and direct your organs to the path of karma. But the path of karma that you are going to perform in Bhakti Shatak, it says that a karma yogi is one who performs worldly duties, but his mind is attached to God. God. Manaharime tana jagatame karma yoga tehijan. Tanaharime mana jagatame yaha mahana agyan. It says when one works with the body, but keeps his mind attached to God, that is called karma yoga. When you engage in spirituality with the body, but your mind is attached to the world, know that to be hypocrisy. 
नियतम कुर कर्मात्म कर्म जायो ह्य कर्मण शरीर यात्रा निचातीन प्रसिद्धा ये द कर्मण एंड देयर सर्टेन कर्मस दैट आर कॉल ऑब्लिगेटरी यू हैव टू परफॉर्म दोस कर्मस बिकॉज एक्शन इज सुपीरियर टू इन एक्शन If you try to remain inactive, Arjun, I say to you, it would not be possible to maintain or to sustain the very body that you have. <laughs> Now, in our research, we have found in the Vedas there is a verse that says, "Alasya ki manusya nam, shari rashyate mahan ripu, nasyate dya samabo vandu kritwa yam na avasiddhati." The greatest disease affecting humans is called laziness. Mm -hmm. My great grandmother had a line. She used to say, "Karo me dawai, dunya me na ba." God never made a medicine to cure laziness. Mm -hmm. Now, where she get that from? God alone know. But that exists in the Vedas. That the greatest enemy to humanity is laziness, and it is dangerous. Why it is dangerous? Because it resides inside of you. Laziness not on the outside; it's on the inside. Work is the true friend that you have, and once you work, you will drive out this enemy, which is called laziness. Build yourself up. Yagyarta karma no yantra, loko yam karma bandana, tadaratam karma kauntiya, mukta sanga samachara. This entire world, Arjun. is bounded by karma and i say to you perform your karma but perform your karma for the sake of yagya when you perform karma for the sake of yagya you perform action for yagya alone it means that when you perform the karma free yourself from the attachment Not the karma. See the word yagya is used everywhere, many places. Like we are having our Rama in yagya. Uh, the concept of the yagya here mm -hmm. is not that. Is not that. It is. It is perform your action with a sense of separation of uh, desire for for the results, mm -hmm. without a sense of doership. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that. Um, once we perform what we are being told, once we are able to perform our action like this with a sense of yoga, of sacrifice, mm -hmm. then what you are saying is that once your duty is done this way, with a sense of sacrifice, then the results of those actions don't attend you. No, you are free. Like I have said the last time, mm -hmm. work in itself is not good or bad. There is no such thing as good work and bad work. The work becomes good or bad, dependent on the, the, the intent, motive, the intent, the yeah. intent with which you perform it. Now, if you perform action and it binds you, that is not yagya. Right. That's bondage. But if you perform action and it elevates you, that is yagya. Yeah. It uplifts you because yagya, the purpose of yagya is upliftment. Upliftment. Yeah. Sahayagya praja shrista purva cha praja pati. अनेन प्रशेदेशिकेट And the way to work, you worship the celestial, you worship the, the, the divine, right? And that would help you in return. Deva na bava yata te na te deva bava yandu va paras param ba bava yanta shreya parama apya sa. When you worship the celestial beings, the celestial beings will cherish you. You know we have a saying locally. We say, "You scratch my back, I scratch your back." You satisfy the devotees; the devotees give you what you want. Is that is the is this is the first step to mm -hmm. elevation? 
and you shall reap the supreme good. There is a verse in the Skanda Puran that says, Arachite Deva Devesha Shanka Chakra Gadadara Arachita Sarava Deva Syur Yata Sarava Gato Hari If you worship Lord Vishnu, you worship everybody because all the divine beings get their energy or source from Lord Vishnu. Vishnu. Mm -hmm. So worshiping Lord Vishnu gives you everything. Ishtanabo Gannibo Deva Dasyante Yagyabhavita Tidaitan Pratatibyo Yobhante Stena Evasa When you worship the Devutas, the Devutas will bestow the enjoyments of life on you. The thing that you want in the material world. But the verse further goes on to say that those who live in this world and want things without giving anything in return, such a person is called a thief. A thief is the one person who does take and don't give back. So yeah. it means if you want material things, worship the devotees. Sooner or later you will realize that the material thing that I crave, I no longer need. And then you will take that worship up to a level higher, which is to uplift you out of this. Yagya shishta shina sando mujjante saravatil bashai munjati tui tvagama papa ye pachantyatma karana. Those who eat the remnants of yagya, they are the ones, Arjun who will be freed from the evil of, of that is called sin. But one who cooks for his own self-gratification, eating that food is eating sins. Now, let me explain something to you. Long ago, maybe it is still being done now, when we have puja, when they don't cook, they take some of the food and they offer it in the fire. All right. I have heard this debate hundreds of times, that you are not supposed to use salt food in the fire. They use only sweet rice, right? That is not true. And the reason that salt food was not offered into the fire was because most people cook it with onion and garlic. So the problem is the onion and garlic. The problem is not the salt. Because if you go to chapter 9 in the Gita, there is a verse, Yatakaroshi Adashnasi Yadajahosi Dadasiyat Yadatapasyasi Kaunteya Tarakurushwa Madarpanam Whatever you do, whatever you eat, offer it first to me. Mm. So that eliminates this, the, the position that you shouldn't use salt food. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't use food that has onion and garlic in it. That is the difference. And that topic, onion and garlic, is not a discussion we're going to have here. We'll have it in another place at another time. Yeah. So it's a Vaishnava tradition where they don't use it. Well, it's there in the scripture that shouldn't yeah. use it. Yeah. It's there in the Bhagavad Purana that it shouldn't be used. And it gives an explanation why it shouldn't be used. Why? Red carrot shouldn't be used. Why mushroom shouldn't be used? All those things are explained. Grapes mm -hmm. should not be used. And they give reasons why. But this is not the forum, forum for, for that. Yeah. But the point being made here is that even the food you get, everything that you have, everything that you achieve, part of it should be given in charity. Because it comes, you have nothing in this world. Yeah. Nothing in this world belongs to you. I've never seen a person die having done over 1,500 funerals in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I've never seen somebody carry anything except what you put in the box. And yeah. they may carry it. You are to tote it for them. And the burning idea. And the burning idea. Yeah. The whole idea is, our principles, is that everything belongs to God. God really wants nothing to us. From us, sorry. And I, you, let's use the example of shivery. What shivery had that God wanted? Nothing but a pure heart. What do we have that God wants? We have nothing that God wants. Yeah. But yet to be grateful that we should not be called thieves. Mm -hmm. Whatever we get, I know when we were growing up, we have a lot of chalers who are farmers. New Year's Day when they reap the garden for the Christmas. New Year's Day they will come and they will bring a bottle of bodhi, yeah. a handful of rice, something. I remember you that. Share it, yeah. right? No. Yes. And even in your pujas, you mm. would find in Hindu, uh, in, in our, our services, always they ensure there is something to eat. Yes. That, that you share. You must share with everybody. Mm -hmm. Right? You know what I consider to be amusing? Is if we do some puja for somebody who is really wealthy, they will offer very little mahanbog. 
they will go maybe in a puja shop and buy a box of sweets. Mm -hmm. Right? Big, big box of sweets. We know already sweets have in it. Mitai, Laddu, Pira, Gulab Jamun. You get more hungry you tell them, <laughs> You get more hungry? No! You get hungry, you eat. But what, when you ask them now, uh. feed the fire. They pinch out a little piece and they feed in the fire. They won't put a whole Laddu. They won't mm -hmm. put a whole Pira. And sometimes you ask people, I say, well, what happened? He said, Bob, I wish I could have eaten this. I said, what happened to you? Well, you know, i diabetic real bad. Mm -hmm. You're diabetic, which means first, you cannot eat it. Mm -hmm. And you're still oh, you still chinks in. You shouldn't, yeah. No, mm -hmm. and you still chinks in to mm -hmm. give God it. Man, put a hole on a, put a hole on. When you offer a coconut in the fire, what would they do, a piece of coconut? You offer a whole coconut. Mm -hmm. So offer it to really please them. He says, and then even, so, even so, sorry, but the, the point we, we are developing here is that the, this propensity in Hindu thinking to give food, food. To, 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 to anybody's home you go, something I've noticed too, they will always offer you something to eat. Something to eat. Something and to drink. This verse will yeah. tell you why. Mm -hmm. This verse now tells you why. Chapter 3, verse 14. Ananad bhavanti bhutani parajanya danna sambhava yag yag bhavati parajanyo yag yakarama samud bhava because from food we get life from rain we get food from yagya we get rain and yagya is born out of karma so everything is a cycle everything is all interdependent on the other one it's like a jigsaw puzzle when you throw the 5,000 pieces on a table, does it make any sense to you? Means nothing to you. But it's when you start to put it together, you realize that these 5,000 pieces are all interlocked with each other. They have to depend on each other to get the end product, which is depicted here. It's the same thing in this life that we live. Yagya, rain, food, life, everything is all interlocked. And the human being has the ability, the capability, to put it together to work for the betterment, not of himself, for the betterment of the country that you live in, for the betterment of the society that you live in. Karma Brahmod Bhavam Vidhi Brahmachara Samod Bhavam Tasma Charavagatam Brahma Nityama Yagya Pratishtitam And Karma Arjun has risen from where? Where does karma come from? Karma comes from the Vedas. And the Vedas are imperishable. It cannot be destroyed. So if the Vedas cannot be destroyed, then the teachings of the Vedas cannot be destroyed. So the all-pervading Veda is centered around what? Around Yajna. So when I checked that, I went and researched it and checked it back. And Yajna by Vishnu, the Vedas have declared that all Yajna is Lord Vishnu himself. Personification of Lord Vishnu. Personification of Lord Vishnu. Now, that doesn't, don't interpret that to mean Puja, Ramayana, Bhagavad, don't, mm. don't interpret to mean that. All Yajna that is done in sincerity is done to Lord All Vishnu. acts of sacrifice mm. in this way. Well, I use the word yeah. karma because we stress in mm -hmm. karma. All karma, if you go to work and make an honest day work, an honest day work is like worshipping Lord Vishnu. Vishnu. Mm -hmm. I talk in karma. Evam prartitama chakram nanuvarta yati vaya jagayur indiyaramo mogam aparta sajivati when we came in this world, Arjun, this is how we met it. You want to call it now tradition? Call it tradition. But this is what we met. There is a system that we follow. We inherit a system from our forefathers. Our grandparents have taught our parents that. Some of us are still lucky that we had grandparents with us too. So we got the same teaching handed on to us twice. From the very old generation and from the preceding one. And you follow this, you follow this principle, you follow this teaching. But Arjun, I say to you, if you live your life in this world, only rejoicing in self-gratification, that is a wasteful life, Arjun. That is a life that should not be lived. That is not the life to live in this world. Because the things that you crave and cherish materially, 
they are not going anywhere. Yeah. Yastvad marati reva siyadatma triptashmanaha atmanyevana santushtas tasya karyana vidyati. He says, the man who rejoices in the self, is satisfied with the self, is centered in the self, for such a person, there is no obligatory duty. Now, what does the self mean? The person who realizes the Paramatma inside of him. When you realize God, there is no karma for you to perform again. All karma expires for you. But look at all these great souls who we say have realized God. They still continue to perform karma. Only karma. They yeah. perform karma not for themselves again. To show people how to reach this level. Yeah. I think at this point, Pandiji, we would need to break. We are at half of our program. Uh, we will now take our break and continue from this verse 17, chapter 3. Do stay with us. Jai Shri Krishna. Welcome back. We are discussing Chapter 3, Bhagavad Gita, uh, our Bhagavad Gita discussions. We will continue now from verse 17. Pandiji. Well, Lord Krishna says to rejoice in the self. Now, to rejoice in the self, the first thing is to perform karma and give up the desire for the fruit of karma. That is what enables you to find the self inside of you. Mm -hmm. You continue performing your duty, but you do not seek anything materially. Naivatasya krite narto na krita neha kashtana Nachasya saravabhuteshu kakshira bhyarata pashraya There is nothing in this world, Arjun. There is no object to acquire by doing action. Nor is there any loss if you do the action. There's nothing you'll gain, there's nothing you'll lose. It all, right? And it, what it simply means, a person who rejoices within himself, he doesn't have to depend on anybody to do anything for him. There is nothing for him to acquire again. He already found the self. He's already found the supreme inside of him. So, so, that, so, so by seeks. doing action, it's not that he's seeking again. There's nothing to gain. And if he doesn't do action, he has nothing he to lose. lose. No, yes. because the he has found himself already. Right. The mm -hmm. purpose of the karma is to realize the supreme Brahman in you. And if you realize the supreme Brahman in you, let's call it the self. If you realize that, what performing karma is going to do for you now? I don't know if you come from the era where you had a full barrel of water with your children. No, that was before my time. Right, before your time. Yeah. You are not always hard working. <laughs> so we nail a piece of wood mm -hmm. across the pitch altin. So you're toting two at a time. It's easier to tote two than to tote one. For balance. For balance. Right. Now, while you're toting the, bar the, the two pitch altin of water, it's a burden. Because when you reach the bar, you have to put on one, offload it, put on the next one, offload it. But when you do it 10, 12 times, mm -hmm. what happens? The barrel full to the brim. So when you bring in the last trip, of two 
picturality of water. What is the purpose of that water in the barrel? None. Because the barrel is already, already filled. Yeah. But you already, you, you still bring the water. Mm -hmm. So he says, you bring it, but you have nothing to get. If you didn't bring the last two pitcher tin, you didn't lose anything because the barrel is already Very filled. filled. Yeah. That is what the self is. Tasama dasakta satatam kadya makarama samachara asakto yachara nakarama paramapnoti purushavaha. Constantly, the individual Arjun should perform his duty without attachment. When you could perform duty without attachment, you are going to realize the Supreme. Karma naivaki san siddhi mastitu janakadaya loka sangrahami vapi san pashyan karatumarahasi. Now, many great souls in this world have liberated themselves while they were alive. They are called Jivan Mukt. Raja Janak is the example given here. Yeah. That he liberated himself through the knowledge of the Gita, but yet he was a king. Yet he did his duty as a king. And every day he was performing action. And every, every day, day he performed yeah. action. Mm -hmm. And there is a beautiful verse in the Ramayana that it says, when the king is prosperous, the country is prosperous. When the citizenry is suffering, that sins fall on the leader. It's there in your mind. The leader is going to pay for it, Swamin. Maybe not in this life. But to pay for it, you're going to pay for it. Go Swami Tulsidas writes, Brahma Gana Jan Yonahi Karama Diye Chitakai. Tulsi Aise Atama Sahaja Naraka Mahamajai. When you renounce worldly duties, with internal enlightenment, when you understand the duty and you, you renounce it, that is called realizing God. But if you don't understand the duty you're doing, you're just doing it, and you don't know what you're doing, you are paving the road with Baba Green to Narak. If you don't understand what the karma you're doing. So that is a dangerous, dangerous road. Hence the Gita says, renounce the fruit of the karma, not the karma. Don't seek the benefit because mm -hmm. you might be doing things that you don't fully understand. I always use the simple example of a man walking the road by a school near a playground with school children playing and he sees a brake bottle there. What does he do? What did you tell me? What do you think he's going to do? Off the top of my head, what I would do is, 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 is remove the bottle. Why? Because no, no, it no. has the potential. Not, not the why, not the why. Yeah. The, 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 the thing is, what do you expect to gain from removing the brake bottle? For me, it's a sense of duty that I could probably avoid an accident no. with a child. What do you gain from it? Nothing externally, but That's right. in, in, internally, of a sense of fulfillment. Right, yeah. because you, you see the threat to yes. the life of a child. Yeah. But you don't expect that child to come and see you. Oh, which child it is? Yeah. Hold on, 500 mm -hmm. children playing there. Mm -hmm. Which one going to come in the morning, Sunday morning, and say, Baba, thank you for moving the bottle? None. Yeah. They don't see the danger in it, but you see the, the potential for danger. Mm -hmm. So you remove that. But a selfish person, a more selfish person, may say, that ain't concern me. And walk past it. Right. So this is why he says, one who renounces worldly duties mm -hmm. without internal enlightenment, with divine knowledge, is going to go to Narak. You must understand what the consequences are going to be. So basically, men like Janak, it's not that they don't perform duties, but they perform their duties without a sense of attraction or aversion. Mm -hmm. They perform their duties, as this verse says, without attachment, mm -hmm. seeking either a, a, a return or avoiding a consequence. They don't think of that no, at all. They don't think yeah. about the consequences. There's no consequences for them. Yad yada charite shretas tatate devo taro janaha sayat pranama makurute lokas tadanu bharatati. Now, we all look for role models. Mm -hmm. All of us look for role models. I remember in the early 70s, there was a Australian, we went when I say we, the West Indies went to Australia to play cricket. And the other fellow they called Jeff Thompson. Yeah. He licked I'm down the whole. I'm using this like a Trinidadian. He licked down the whole West Indies team. 
So when we go to practice now, we try to imitate his action, mm -hmm. how he's a bull. Why so is a Galix? And as a child, I remember that many of our, my school friends, yeah, um, they they will use these names. I, I want to be like Thompson. Yeah. yeah. But what they didn't understand, Thompson is a throw javelin. <laughs> so he had a natural swing. Yeah. He like, never around his arm. No. Yeah. Was a, yeah. Sling. Yeah. Yeah. Sling action. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we we want to imitate him. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for what is called, in a simpler term, role models. Yeah. What I'm saying, we have chosen the wrong role models. Some of us choose the wrong role models. Because when we hear that the role model we have chosen has now entered the road of disaster, what do you do then? You lose confidence. Confidence, yeah. Right? So you so see? It's important that, that we, we look at who we choose as our role models, as the point you're making here. This is why the mm -hmm. Gita and our scriptures have. Listen, there's a prayer we say at the end of every puja. What is the prayer we say? We call it a closing prayer. For Tuam Eva Mata. Right. Yeah. Translate what that really means. Tuam Eva Mata, Chapita Tuam Eva. First, God is my mother, God is my father. Mm -hmm. Tuam Eva Bandushta, God is now my Sakha, my friend. And in the end, what you say? Saravan. Everything. Everything. So when I look for a role model, I look for a role model who could be a mother to me, who could be a father to me, who could be a friend to me, and who could be somebody that I could 100% confide depend in. Depend on, yeah. Depend on, in any situation, you depend on them. If you remember the discussion that took place between Sugriv and Ram, mm. don't see that, I, I'm trying to remember the line while I'm going through this, and it slipped in my mind, that when you have a problem, you must look at a problem that you have like a grain of sand. But when your friend have a problem, it's like that could be like a mountain. Yeah. So all the problem, the problem that Sugriv had was no problem compared to the problem that Ram Sri was Ram had, yeah. And Ram insisted, listen, put aside my problem, you know, let me help you first. And you know the most beautiful line written there was spoken by Bali. May Bali Sugriv Apiara Avagunakarana Nata Muhimara. Right? What, so, yeah, that's interesting, eh? May Bali. What enmity you have with me? Yeah. My baby, I'm your enemy. Yeah. Sugriva Piara, Sugriva is your friend. Karana Kawana Nata Muhimara. Tell me, Lord, why you shoot me? Mm. I never had a misunderstanding with you. But the Lord told long and tell him, he said, The response was excellent. my friend. Yeah. And if my friend have a trouble, it's my trouble. I have a problem. But he goes on to explain why he shot him in the end. But we wouldn't discuss that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we were having. No, again, it's, 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 it's because of, of, of dharma. Yeah. What, is the correct, thing to do? what is the righteous thing to do? Because he also made there's other arguments in Valmiki Ramayan that Sri Ram says he is, as the king of Kosha, he has a right to ensure Dharma throw the land. Throw the land. Yeah. But you see, there's a further piece that Ram explained when Bali died, who he turned to to cremate Bali and perform the rites for him. He, he turned to Sugriv. He said, Do it. He said, But Bali is my enemy. He said, Bali is dead. You are enemy with a dead man? Mm -hmm. You know, but we in this material world, we carry, we carry this yeah. animosity and this madness that where we see how it now playing out. Even in Mahabharat, you find during the day, the, 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 the warriors would fight. But in the night. And in the evening, they would eat together. They would sit down and discuss with one another. Yeah. Because it, it, it was never, it's interesting, yeah? Yeah. It, it's never personal. It is an act of it's duty. You see, a lot of people cannot tell the difference between issue and personality. personality. Yeah. My problem with you is not personality. I can never be you and you can never be me. Mm -hmm. My issue with you is issues. Let us discuss the issue. Yeah. We may not agree on issues, but at the end of it, we should not have a cup of tea together. We're not enemies, but we are carrying this thing. That is the lessons we should learn from our scriptures. Ram says, yeah. listen, I know you are so grieved. You and Bali were enemies, but Bali is now dead. Yeah. You are now the most senior, most in the family. It's yeah. now and you have, you have a duty to your brother. It is your duty because you are now the king. Yeah. You have a right to look after everybody. So whatever great people do, ordinary people they follow. They to use, follow it, them. use it as examples. They use it as examples. And a very beautiful verse, Lord Krishna Himself says, "Name partas tikaratabhyam." Trishulokeshu na kinchana 
There is nothing in the three worlds, Arjun, that has not been done by me. Nor is there anything in the three worlds unattained by me. I could attain anything I want, and yet I still perform my duty. duty. Continues I, to work. I have yeah. a duty to perform. And you see, we could expand that duty that Lord Krishna is talking about. On the battlefield, the duty there is different. His duty on the battlefield is to ensure that to wheel and deal this chariot mm. to prevent Arjun from being harmed or destroyed. Yeah, on, the, on, the, on, the, on that plane, on that level. Now, the yeah. Sri Krishna in Bindavan has a different duty. That duty has nothing to do with Arjun. That duty has to do with his devotees. Mm -hmm. But when he became the king of Mathura, his duty wasn't for Bindraban. The duty wasn't for Arjun. The duty was now for the nation. And yet he has that duty to perform. And yet he never sign off on a document and say, OK, look, Pandit, you do this. That's your responsibility. No. All responsibilities in the end, it falls on the leader. Right? So he says, there is nothing in this world that has not been done by me, nor anything unattained by me. And yet, I still perform my duty. And if you think of him as a supreme divinity in this context, as a supreme divinity, there is nothing to be achieved. There is nothing not yet achieved, as he says. Mm -hmm. But yet still, so Bhagwan continues to act. To, to act. And, the, and the reason is, mm -hmm. Whatever great people do, ordinary people follow. Yeah. Now, we have a tradition in this country, uh, Ram Leela. You choose people to play the role of Ram. Sri Ram, Lachman, yeah. Sita, mm -hmm. Hanuman, everybody. The guy we did the Yagya for, Siu. Mm -hmm. He's the Ram one. Every year in the Ram Leela, he's you know, when we did Ram Leela, even here in Diego Martin, because it's Sri Ram Ram brought Ram Leela to Diego Martin, I found it easier to find people who want to act as demons than Sri Ram, eh? Okay. <laughs> well, maybe because of the area you oh, were. When, when my father How was growing up. How many bad talk the area like that, man? When my uh, father was growing up. No, no. Probably the, yeah, the, the, children, the children, they find the demons have more fun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's for fun. <laughs> when my father was playing Ram Lila as a boy growing up uh -huh. in the 1930s, mm -hmm. he used to play the role of Sita in the Ram But many of, the, in, many of these um, early Ram Lila's, from what I have known, is a lot of men only who acted, eh? You, I'll, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. In those days, from what I was told from my father, mm -hmm. when they had Ram Lila coming up, they, ne they never celebrate. I see people celebrating Christian Lila. There's nothing called Christian Lila, eh? That should never be celebrated. Kant's Leela, yes, not Krishna Leela. And they give a reason why it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. The Bisham Sagar tell you why it shouldn't be Krishna Leela, but Kant's Leela. Mm -hmm. Because everybody who took part in that Ram Leela had to go by the Guru house and stay in Sira Hill. So all the children used to stay there. Mm -hmm. They move out everything from the living room and they spread bag on the ground and all, everybody sleep in there. And the godmother of the home, she will cook and take care of them. I talk about two, three weeks before Ramlila, you know. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, if I just share the experience out of India, um, you find many of these groups who do Ramlila or, or, or Kathas like this, they, particularly, um, uh, I saw it in Mathura, they, they were all male. Mm -hmm. To the same point you're making, because the female parts were played by men also. And one mm -hmm. of the reasons is because they were like a traveling troupe. Mm -hmm. So that the, the, it was easier for the men all to, to travel yeah, than girls. the girls with yeah. them. Yeah. But yeah. now that has changed. Yeah. Now the girl who plays Sita is really a girl. And now also some of these older Kathas, like, I don't know if there are still groups that do like Harishchandra Katha, some of these old things that we had in Trinidad. Some of it seems to have died. Huh? Well, the Harishchandra and the Prahalad, the man who is the mastermind of that, is yeah. a man from Princess Town. He has now died. Suchit. Yeah. Now I remember um, for Sina Prahalad, Katha, and um, it was quite interesting. You did them for, for like, like in, on Saturday nights and weddings and so mm -hmm. the, the, these Kathas. But the basic point is Krishna Bhagwan is saying that while he has no need, he has no needs, yet he continues to act. I think that this is, Pandaji, an, an interesting point, and at this point we would have to 
conclude our program today? Are we concluded with anything else you want to raise up to these verses, up to this point? Well, like I say, when, when we choose people that we want to emulate, mm -hmm. we must emulate people not only because of how they look or somebody win a gold medal in the Olympics. Look at the moral... Or a movie star. Well, worst people to emulate. Mm -hmm. But look at the morality that they could give. People yes. cannot give you morality. That is not a person you want to emulate because you will go down the very road and you do not have the backing financially to support that kind of habit. Mm -hmm. You understand? And you have to also remember that we live in dangerous times. I use three famous letters when I do Yagya called GDP. GDP is going to destroy this universe. Now, if you take GDP in the literal sense, what it means? What it means on it? Gross domestic product. Oh, you yeah. think that's what it means? Yeah. How does gross domestic product destroy this universe? No, it's not, it's not that. You, you, have, you have your own for GDP. That's so right. You share that, yeah. And the three words, I could give you the three <laughs> words now. The G, guns. D, drugs. P, pornography. Children, pornography. Mm -hmm. Those three things are destroying this universe. Destroying it. That GDP. There is no return from that, you know. There's nobody who could control any one of those three. Those things could buy the richest country in the world. It's day, we live in dangerous times. That is why Lord Krishna was very clear when he says to Arjun, be very careful, Arjun, how you emulate anybody. Or and not you, you which is also important to our appearance, for you to look at and have a sense of what influences are being brought to bear on your children? Well, you see, and what they expose themselves to. But Pandaji, with mm -hmm. all due respect, we always want to shift the blame. So I might have to struggle to fork out five thousand mm dollars -hmm. to buy a special phone for my child. Mm -hmm. But do I monitor what that child is doing on the phone? Yeah. Do I monitor what that child is doing on an iPad? And let yeah. me tell you something: those things that I am talking about, especially the P in the GDP. They have such nice names, and you think it's really a nice thing. Only when you hit that button, mm -hmm. you realize the danger in what you're doing. And once you hit that button, there is no turning back. So they make it in such a way to entice you. This is why Lord Krishna said, be very careful, Arjun, of who you choose as a role model. Be very careful as a child, who your friends are. Mm -hmm. Be very careful. You know, sometimes I see a thing when you're watching programs on television, sometimes you see, like during school time, this child going by a friend house to spend the night, I've never termed it as used for it, a sleepover. Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? Are you going to let my five-year, six-year-old child go in somebody else's house and sleep? Who I don't even know because my child and this child is a friend in school? That don't work for me, friend. The first time my children slept outside their home, they were both able to vote. Right? These are interesting issues. It's very, very interesting yeah. because we don't see the danger. We only see the danger when the, when the incident happen. happens. Yeah. And then there's a verse that says, too late, too late shall be the cry. I remember seeing an advertisement on TV. It struck me at the time. Eh? It was, was um, international television, not here. Uh, the uh, uh, ad came up at, I think it was 9.30. 9.30 p.m. It said, it's 9.30 p.m. Do you know where your children are? And it told me something about the society yeah, mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and, and it, Trinidad and Tobago society in many ways uh, emulating that. Huh? Those in the last two days, mm -hmm. what I have seen mm -hmm. has scared me the most in my whole lifetime. What I have seen in the last two days mm -hmm. have scared me the most that I have ever been afraid of, of anything in my life. You see, it all depends on what we want to do with ourselves. Ultimately, the choices are ours. This verse that Bhagwan Sri Krishna says, where he says, whatever a great man does, that very thing other men do. The whole idea of a role models. As we end this program, we invite you to think on that. Who are your role models? Who are your children's role models? And that has a great bearing on what can happen. Pandiji, as we conclude, any concluding comments? Well, like I say, be careful. We, still, we are still living in dangerous times. Uh, we owe our children a responsibility to be there for them all the time. 
it's a difficult sacrifice, but that is not something you should have known from the beginning. Yeah. This is why I have always said, whatever I have learned in my life, I have learned from four grandparents. Mm -hmm. And what I've imparted to my children is what I have learned from four grandparents and two parents. I impart that to them. And I send them out in the world. I send them out as teenagers. They're living in a foreign country since teenage. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And yet they, held, they hold their head high because of what they have learned. The sanskar, the right? training. So the teachings that we impart to them are the teachings with which we could fearlessly send them out in this world. Armed with the requisite knowledge. With the knowledge. And understanding as yeah. to what to face. As we conclude this program, I want to thank all of you for joining, for your continued participation. To all our sponsors, we want to say many thanks. Thank you very much for buying into the idea of this series of uh, programs exploring Bhagavad Gita further. And in these difficult times financially, it's still not the very best to those who have literally sponsored these programs. So we want to say many thanks to you. If you have any questions, you can, of course, contact us. You can WhatsApp 7849880, or you can call Pandit Vikramji directly at 652 1043. Until next time, Jai Shri Krishna.